Marge, it's time for the parade of Thanksgiving. I'll come back up here and we'll get that going, okay? Thank you all. Let's all turn in our hymnals to hymn number 606. Once to every man and nation, and let us all rise as we sing. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning to worship your holy name. We thank you for everyone that's here to visit, either visiting or members that have come to visit and be with our church. We thank you for this service that we have in thanksgiving and giving to others in need. We thank you, Lord. May we always do what we're doing today in our lives to feed those that are in need and to give to those that are in need. 
We thank you for all the many blessings to bestow upon this church and on everybody that is here today. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, moms and dads and grandmas, aunts and uncles might want to get their cameras ready to take pictures of our little participants this morning. They are going to be holding up letters that spell something. Some might be a little sideways, they're young. <laughs> but we think you'll get the gist of it. Hold them up so everybody can see those letters, okay? I'll go ahead and start reading this little poem while they get their letters together. Thanksgiving observance. Count your blessings instead of your crosses. Count your gains instead of your losses. Count your joys instead of your woes. And count your friends instead of your foes. Count your smiles instead of your tears. Count your courage instead of your fears. Count your full years instead of your lean. Count your kind deeds instead of your mean. Count your health instead of your wealth. And count on God instead of yourself. And what do they spell out there? Kids, what do you have? Happy Thanksgiving to each of you. family will provide us special music. Children, you can go with Miss Umai.
was beautiful. Let's turn in our hymnals now to hymn number 559. 559. Now thank we all our God. Amen. Appreciated that music very much. We have a lot of pilgrims up front. If we have any other children in the congregation this morning that would like to come, come forward at this time and help us out, and parents, you want to help them and bring them down here, that's okay. So now it's time for our parade of Thanksgiving. Just a quick moment of explanation again. We've got some new people in here. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to have prayer for the food that has come in. This food will be used to create food baskets for the needy, either within our church or uh, outside of our church. We have opportunities in both of those instances. We appreciate people who have brought food today. You will see food that's lining the aisles there. Once we're done with the prayer, we're going, as soon as I'm done with the prayer, Ben will have uh, some of our men push these down the center aisle here. And don't stop just yet. We'll just push them all the way to the end, and then we'll just line them up down the aisle back towards this way. Then the children will go forward, and the adults will help them to put the food into the baskets. I'm assuming we're going to be having some music going on at that time. We'll be singing a hymn while that is happening, okay? And then once the food goes out the back door, we have uh, some individuals back there to assemble food baskets. If you are here and you would like a food basket, uh, we will be having the food organized in such a way that you can create your own food basket, okay? So give them a few minutes to get the food sorted. If anyone would like to help the people sort the food and put it in you know, an organized fashion, we'll have the potatoes here, we'll have the macaroni and cheese here, we'll have the canned fruit over here, etc. We could perhaps use some help back there as well. So I think I've given enough instruction. I think we have an idea of what's going on. I hope we got some good pictures of our pilgrims here because they sure do look cute. Let us have prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as Bob Montoya prayed just a moment ago, we are grateful that we can be here to worship you today. And we're grateful that we can 
affirm with you what you have done for us. All of this food here, sometimes we take it for granted. Looks like just a box of Kellogg's Corn Flakes to me. But this food will help alleviate the hunger in someone's family this Thanksgiving time. So, Lord, we're thankful for how you have blessed us and help us to give. The Bible says the most famous verse in all the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave. And giving is a major, if not the major, attribute of God. He gave his son for us. And, Lord, help us to in turn give and to care for those who are in need. The instruction that, that uh, God gave through Daniel to King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar had become aware of who God was through the teachings of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But he, pride had welled up in his heart. So God gave to Nebuchadnezzar a dream and he called on Daniel to come and give him the interpretation. And one of the pieces of instruction that God gave to the king, and this can apply to any king, any president, any governor, and to us as instruction given to King Nebuchadnezzar was to be merciful to the poor and the needy. And Lord, help us to be merciful and poor to the needy as you instructed King Nebuchadnezzar through Daniel. We thank you, Lord, for your wisdom and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and roll these uh, baskets forward at this time.
Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath to each and every one. And we want to give a special thanks to everybody who brought something to share with those who may not have. And we want to thank you for that. But now is our, is our time to continue to give. And so I have this statement to read for you. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2, 3 through 8. As stewards of God, we need to represent not only God's mission on earth, but also God's character. What is God like? Philippians 2 tells us that God, that Jesus looks to the interests of others. He humbled himself and submitted to death on your, our behalf. God created humans in relationship so that we can learn to be more like him. What do our relationships look like? Are we practicing the art of submission or do we like to have our own way? If we compare ourselves to the picture of Jesus' character in Philippians 2, how can we fare? What others look, when others look at us, will they see Jesus in us? Ellen White writes that peace and joy and perfect submission to the will of heaven exists through the angelic host. Love to God was supreme. Love for one another impartial. Such was the condition that existed for ceaseless ages before the entrance of sin. Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4. It seems that submission to God's will is a character that keeps the universe sinless in eternity past. Certainly the same character will be needed in eternity to come as well. So let us practice the art of submission to God's will by being humble and submissive to one another here and now. So I pray, dear Lord, may we be good stewards of our funds, of our times, but also of our character, that others can see you in us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Rejoice, the Lord is King, the Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice. Jesus the Savior reigns, 
Good morning, church. Okay, so the verses I'm going to be reading out of is the Psalms 117, 100, and 103. So if you guys want to turn your Bibles with me. So Psalms 117 says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. And then Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and his sheep of his pasture. I'm going to read that one more. That's powerful. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. And the last one is Psalms 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is with and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your mouth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. Appreciated those scriptures. Ellen White says in the little uh, devotional book, My Life Today, and just a quick reminder in case you didn't know, at this time of the year, the Pacific Press begins to promote books for giving at Christmas time during this giving season. Generally, there's an Ellen White devotional, and the Ellen White devotional that's being promoted for sale this Christmas season is the book My Life Today. Now they've repackaged it. It has a colorful cover, but it's the same book. And I'm going to make a short reading and then we're going to have a few testimonies. Have we not reason to talk of God's goodness and to tell of his power? When friends are kind to us, we think it's a privilege to thank them for their kindness. How much more should we count it a joy to return thanks to our friend Jesus who has given us every good and perfect gift? Amen? Then let us in every church cultivate thanksgiving to God. Let us educate our lips to praise God in the family circle. Let our gifts and offerings declare our gratitude for the favor we daily receive. Amen? I've asked Miss Terry Montoya, she's going to share a testimony. As soon as she's done, Dr. David Pinnock will come forward and he'll share a short testimony as well. And then we're going to open it up for other testimonies. Thank you. It's always a joy to talk about Jesus, isn't it? I became a Christian when I was 14 years old, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And I have never looked back. It has been my thrill to have lived in the Seventh-day Adventist Church since I was 14. And I hope each of you have made that decision today. I would like to share with you words about being thankful. T stands for truth. And in John 8.32 it says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. H is for heaven. But as it is written... What no eye has seen nor ear heard, 
nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2.9 A is the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Ephesians 6, 8. N for neighbors. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good and build him up in Romans 15, 2. K for kindness. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you in Ephesians 4.32. F is for forgiveness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from our sins. And what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. U is for the ultimate sacrifice. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, 1 Peter 3.18. And L is for love. We're in John 3.16. You want to recite it with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Well, you know, music means so much to me, and I would like Marva to come up here and all of us to turn in our hymnals to him number 598, and we'll sing the first, second, and fifth verses of Watch Ye Saints. I'd like you to look at these words of this hymn, the whole hymn. You know, with eyelids waking, lo, the powers of heaven are shaking. Keep your lamps all what? Trimmed and burning. Let that be our prayer today. Watch ye saints with eyelids waking, lo, the powers of heaven are shaking. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning, ready for your Lord's returning. Amen. Today, we celebrate Thanksgiving in our church. And I just want to thank God for the Heights family. 
uh, our pastor is not here today, but also I would like to extend a thanks to him also. My elders and everyone that had prayed for me. And you all know my story. For six years now, I've been preaching and giving my testimony. This morning, as I sit in the classroom with Bob and the rest of the students, um, I just was thinking about what we were talking about. I want to read this verse, Joshua 24 and verse six, uh, 4, 15. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day who you will serve, whether the God which your fathers serve that we're on the other side of the flood or the God of the Ammonites in whose land he dwell. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, uh, my wife, she went, uh, she went to Central with the Pathfinders. But I just want to say, we have three kids uh, between <laughs> my wife and I. And, uh, you know, when the first kid was born, she had a lot of problem with it. So I thought she was never going to have kids anymore for the kind of a pain she bear with the first one. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> okay. Jeff want to know what happened. <laughs> He born with the umbilical cord around his neck, so he was almost out, and they had to put him back in and, you know, do the, all the, uh, all the uh, work that they had to do to get him loose. So she bear a awful, awful birth with the first kid. He's not here today because he's in medical school. And that's the, one of the reasons why I want to talk about my kids, giving God thanks for my kids today. Tanya was born in the middle of the two boys. So she, she is my queen. <laughs> Frederick now. Frederick is one of my blessings that I said God has given us. He was born the 25th of December. What a blessing. And that's the reason I want to give God many thanks this morning for my little Frederick. Frederick, when, he, when we came here, Frederick was only, when we came to the Heights, Frederick was only eight months old. There is Ellen. Ellen used to have him lift up and baby him for me. You know, Frederick never said a word. Not a word. You know, kids grew up, no, and mommy and daddy. Frederick did not say a word until he was six years old. Never talk. No, I can't stop him from talking. <laughs> Frederick is my preacher. He, he said he, want, he don't want to be a pastor, but he, he wants to be a doctor, but he wants to do the same thing his dad does, just preach for just for, to, to, give the, um, to give the word to other people. So I want to give thanks to God for all my kids and to all the Heights Church today because you all know what I went through and you all pray for me. And I, let me tell you something. I got to give thanks to the prior warriors in this church. You know, I... Believe in prayer, not that I didn't believe in prayer. I believe in prayer when I was going through my heart, my rough times, but I came through because somebody prayed. Somebody prayed. And my testimony today is to give God thanks for all the blessing that He has given us. 
I know I, I'm living overtime. I have six years already. I don't know how much more I'm going to go. But keep praying for me. And thanks to the Heights Church. And thanks to my prior warrior. Thanks to my family. Thank you very much. May be visiting with us. Uh, Dr. David Pinnock had a heart transplant six years ago, uh, and he has commented before that someone gave their life for his life, literally. And we know that Jesus gave his life for us. Amen. Does anyone else have a little testimony? We have someone here. Okay, they have the microphone. If they want to stand, a short testimony. Thank you. Go ahead. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I want to give thanks to God, not because it's Thanksgiving. You know, I want to thank God because he did a miracle for my mom. Two months ago, she came to be in coma. She's pretty healthy and she a lot of healthy food, but, you know, in coma for five days. We, I never thought that she's going to be like that. i asking God to, to do what, what he wants to do for her. But I always had the faith. So my mama wake up. He raised her from the dead. And uh, my brothers and I, my family, everybody who prayed for her, we believe that God do miracles in this time. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Don't be shy. We have one over here. We have one right here. Go ahead. Go ahead, Cherry. Happy Sabbath, everybody. I would like to, I'm so grateful for God for giving me all the miracles and the blessings. From the time we started planning to go to come here to America and to such time that I also planned and put everything to God, my promise to my family that I will bring them here with me in a matter of six months with the help of my um, Heights Church family, they welcomed me. They make it very warm. When I came here, I had to walk all the way because I thought the church is up there. Like um, almost two hours of walking there. It was, very, it was very cold last December 14. I arrived here. So the next Saturday, we, I tried to come to church, but I lost my way. So someone had to tell me, you have to go to that stoplight over there and walk. When I first saw the church, I was crying because I said, when I see an Adventist church, even in the Philippines, if you are lost somewhere, just go to an Adventist church and everything will be okay. Amen. That's Amen. what I felt. And I'm so thankful for my family here. There's a lot of challenges, but I'm so thankful that we are facing this together. My husband, please Please stand. He's a little bit shy. <laughs> and my daughter, Brittany, um, I'm, I'm so thankful also for her because it's her, it's her birthday yesterday. And then it's her first birthday in the USA. And my son, Chino, thank you so much. Brittany is um, studying in Sandia View Academy. She's now in her senior year. And we are hoping that our kids and our family, whatever talents we have, we are going to give it back to the Lord and to the people who have helped us a lot. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not known for short uh, testimonies, but I would like to share with you uh, some things that have been happening with me. I am a retired, but working harder than I was when I was working. You that are retired know that. Um, I've got a lot of projects to do outside, and I'm battling with the weather. But um, I haven't been battling as hard this year because I asked the Lord um, to help me have good days so I'd get more done. And my weather reporter up here, I asked her to give me um, a weather report for the next few days, temperature, wind speed, and also precipitation because I battle those all the time. 
So anyway, she says, um, well, tomorrow morning it's going to be raining at 10 o'clock, according to the weather report. And so I try to figure out what I can get done. And so I said, well, Lord, you know what? I, I don't think I can get it done by 10 o'clock. Can you postpone the rain till the afternoon? And so I'll get out there expecting to do that job. And uh, lo and behold, um, it doesn't rain. And the, the weather is fair. And um, so when the, the job is finished, it starts sprinkling. And by the time I get my tools put away and cleaned up, it's raining. Um, last week, not this week, but the last week before Wednesday, I went and got an eye exam uh, that I hadn't had uh, comprehensive done in probably 20 years. Anyway, I went in there and they said, well, your eyes are healthy. They said, um, but we need to dilate your eyes. So they put a couple of different things. In. Um, I said, well, what's this going to do to me? Am I going to be able to see to drive? And they said, oh, no problem. So I said, well, how long is this going to last? And they said, well, about four hours. So anyway, I needed to go visit my mom in a nursing home, so I did that. But after I got out of there, um, those of you who know Albuquerque, you understand Coors Road. That's a fast-moving uh, corridor uh, going north and south and high speed, a lot of traffic. And so I was on there. And it had been raining. And so I was in the far left lane trying to get on Paseo del Norte. You know that's another corridor uh, going east and west. And so I realized um, very shortly once I was able, I was having trouble because my vision was fuzzy. And I couldn't get depth perception. And so I realized finally that the car in front of me was slowing down faster than I was. And so I, I hit my brakes, and in the water, the car begins to slide. And I realized very shortly that I was going to smash into the back of that car. And so I just said out loud, Lord, help me. And instantly, the car went shot over into the other lane. A pickup truck went whizzing by this side. And I don't know how that, that I avoided that accident. It wasn't me. It was God taking the control. I just praised God all the way home. Day before yesterday, I work at a, a place. I, I go back. I'm retired from there, but I go back one week a month so I can kind of troubleshoot different things. And um, a couple of weeks ago, we loaded up some brand new software. And uh, they said, you know, we're having trouble with this. Um, can you come in and, and, and look at it? So I came in. Um, I planned to work... Um, Wednesday through Friday, figured I could get it wrapped up in that amount of time, but I uh, wasn't there for very long and I realized that their computer problems was far beyond my expertise level. And so um, we called in some of the local people there that uh, they are familiar with that kind of thing, and they said, you know what, uh, this is beyond us, you're going to have to call the manufacturer of the software. So Thursday morning I went in there and... Um, Tried to get in on the, um, you know, the, the helpline. All you get there, folks, is just um, uh, music for two or three hours. <laughs> so I hung up and um, went on the, the online chat situation. And so I asked them the questions and said, um, and the people there said, you know, we, we don't know that the answers to those questions either. And so I, after going through two or three of those people, um, I said, Lord, I don't want to be here on Friday. That's the preparation day. We're supposed to be, you know, getting our things in order. I said, I don't want to be here tomorrow. So can please help this thing to be fixed today. And um, so, you know, after all this, still going through the, the chats and all that kind of things, I just finally gave up and asked the Lord, said, Lord, you're going to have to do something here because it's far beyond me. At uh, 4 o'clock, the office manager uh, calls across and said, um, there's a person from the software company that would like to talk to you. So during the next two hours, he went through and cleaned up every problem that we had, plus several that we didn't know we had. He was a high-level guy that had been working in 
in, on this software for about 15 years. So he knew exactly what to do, and he went there, and he did it. And I just praise the Lord. I didn't go to work yesterday. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's so nice to be able to give these kind of testimonies where God is there with you and for you, and he's with everyone here. You know, if you are, you know, sincere about what you're doing and you're trying to um, serve the Lord, then he answers. I have three uh, reasons to thank the Lord. Uh, hospital here. My husband is retired Air Force. He's 91. He has health challenges. And just the last week, they gave him daytime oxygen, checked his eyes, and they're putting in a stair lift in our house because watching him go down the stairs is pretty terrifying right now. And we're thankful for the VA over there. And secondly, uh, I live in an older neighborhood near the fairgrounds and a lot of the folks are passing away or moving out so we have empty houses and we had three empty houses on our block and we were getting situations like squatters and and anybody who's been had this you know you can have problems just in the last few months thankfully people have purchased those homes and are cleaning them and fixing them all up and renovating them to flip so believe me this is a blessing because there's been some real real problems with some of these homes a few of you may remember several years ago now, we had a house across the street that literally, and I'm not exaggerating, had Satanists living in it. There were all these kids, there were really strange drugs, it was bad. And finally, I went upstairs one day and looked across the street and I said, Jesus, cast them out. Two weeks later, a big truck rolled up and away they went. Amen. And uh, I believe that was an answer to prayer. The Previous owners had to come. The house inside was full of satanic symbols. I mean, this was, you know, really bad stuff going on in there. And last, uh, third, is that uh, I also had a long history of eye, eye problems and allergies and drippy eyes, just awful. Finally, it was in pain, my right eye, and I found out that I had ingrown eyelashes. You don't want it. I had never heard of it. I don't ever want to hear about it again. But thanks to our modern medical they did laser treatments and to remove them, and I am pain-free. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Talk of his goodness. Tell of his power. We have t time for one more, then I have a very brief thing I want to share. I think Rebecca's got her hand up. I think somebody back here has their hand up. Brief testimony. Patricia. Mine's very, very brief. supported the bell choir we have uh, just by word of mouth been able to raise exactly how much money we needed for refurbishing of our bells our bells are 20 years old and they would never been refurnished and through the generosity of just mouth to mouth hey do you have fifty dollars you can give to the bells so uh, that that has been organized our bells will be uh being refurbished uh, after January 1st through the 13th. They should be back by February 10th, and you should hear us ring on newly refurbished bells February 17th. So I am so thankful to everyone that's involved with the Bell Choir Ministry and all of you that have chosen to support the bells and uh, the refurbishing that they, they need it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, dear Jesus. Amen. The bells will sound so much better once they're tuned to. Marsha, I called you Patricia. I meant to say Marsha. Marsha Power. friend that's in uh, where they haven't had a vacation for several years so they went as part of uh, anniversary and all that stuff and she called me the other day and saying you know uh, about some stuff that was happening to her phone and we got talking about uh, her trip she says it's raining we haven't and her husband is a non-believer, and she says he hasn't been able to get out. He's a scuba diver. So I prayed. I said, God, 
please open it up so this gentleman goes swimming in, you know, scuba diving. I know it's a selfish prayer, but please, I got a text message. He went out and he saw fish and turtles that he had never seen before. And I just praise God that he opened the way so that this man could get out and go into the ocean and see what he has created. And maybe through that it might put in his heart that God is there for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for sharing that. Marva will have the last testimony. Come on up, Marva. I want to give thanks. I have to give thanks for my mom, the way God has preserved my mom. Um, last month, she celebrated her 96th birthday, and she's still able to come to church. Uh, this month, she went to the nursing home with us. I mean, that's a long day for someone 96 to go went to the nursing home with us to sing, and we didn't get home until maybe 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm really blessed uh, that she's still able to cook and clean and plant, and her memory is just so much better than mine. And also, from, and she is legally blind. My brother is totally blind, and he cooks better than I can cook. He calls up my mom, and he's like, Mommy, how do you cook such and such? And she tells him, and he cooks it. It's just amazing. Now he has someone who wants to pay him to cook for them. I know. It's amazing. So I am, I am blessed. Um, I still have my two eyes, and I still can work. But God is so good because as I was growing up, my mom always talked about, you know, she's not long for here. She won't be around. You know, she won't be around. And she's still around. And she's still around with good memory and, and very good health. And I praise God each and every day for her. And thank you for loving her. Oh, most of all, thank you, um, Heights Church, for loving her. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marva. Yes, sir. He's not here? Okay. Um, we'll, we'll have the closing prayer in just a moment. We were looking for, for Ron Fox. I guess he's, he's not here at the moment. Um, just one final, sh very, very brief testimony. Thank you, Marva. That was excellent. Let's keep uh, Ina in prayer, his, her, uh, her mother. Um, I'll, I'll title this Testimony for the Church. This is not volume 10. For those of you who know, there's nine volumes of the testimonies. But uh, back in the 1950s, the conference leadership decided there needed to be a church in the far northeast part of the Albuquerque area. And uh, they prayed about it, and they decided to build a church in this area. They looked for someone to donate land, and an individual named Blake Chancellor, the person who founded Blake Slotterberger, donated this property that we're sitting on here. Also, the property where the apartments are next door, which was eventually sold off. The property where the dental offices are next door, that was eventually sold off as well. Those monies helped to finance this church and get it going. They also, Lois, they were looking for a pastor, and they looked for a young man. They found a young man who was pastoring up in uh, the uh, Raton, near Raton, New Mexico. And that pastor was Pastor Kenneth Cox. Anybody here ever heard of Kenneth Cox, the evangelist? He was the first pastor of this church. He was standing out here one day on the dirt lot. There was no, no church here. There was no paved roads out here. It's a dirt road out here on Wyoming Boulevard. And as he was uh, standing here uh, praying and thinking about how to build this church, Someone drove up in a pickup truck and stopped and asked him if he could see the blueprints. Elder Cox actually loaned him the blueprints, and uh, a few months later, a semi-truck, flatbed semi-truck, drove up with all the steel, which you can find in this church. All these girders, everything has steel in it. The concrete below us has steel in it. Every bit of steel was donated by a non-Adventist man who was dro driven, driving by and the Lord impressed him to stop and ask if he could help, and he donated all of that, okay? And, uh, this, uh, and uh, to hear Kenneth Cox tell it, we believe it's a miracle church. Fast forward to the 2000s, 
we decided to take a step and remodel this church. It needed it. It hadn't had a major remodel since the early 60s. You go out here where the uh, playground is here, out here, the, uh, what do we call it, the courtyard. The covering for the courtyard was collapsing. It was rotting, falling apart. You came here in the wintertime. Uh, chances are you could see your breath in here. It was very cold. When you turned the heat on, it was all or nothing. You couldn't adjust the heat. You just turned the heat on. Bob Hardy kept it going, I think, with a hammer and some bailing wire. And there were uh, many other problems with our church. We had, to, we had to fix it up. And so we took a step of faith, this church did. Amen? And uh, we, we remodeled this church. Out, all the foyer out there, the heating and the cooling, all of that was supplied by the grace of God by people who did that. But that got us in a lot of debt. When we started remodeling, that was back when the financial woes hit our country back in 2008, 2007. Do you all remember that? Price of goods, price of building materials went up, skyrocketed. And we ended up incurring a lot of debt. We incurred a lot of debt. And we began to struggle significantly. and We weren't quite sure what to do. The conference looked for a plan, asked us for a plan to get out of debt. And we went and Ron Fox and I went down there with the pastor to the conference office and we presented them with a plan. It had several steps. We had already begun to fulfill those steps. But one, of the, one item on the plan was to list the church for sale. So we put the church up for sale. That's one way of getting out of debt, sell your assets. The biggest asset we have is what we're sitting in right now. We listed the church for $2.2 million, I think is what we listed it for, David. And we kept it on the market for quite some time. And finally, we got not just a devil, but we got a big bite. Somebody wanted to put a restaurant here and a brewery and what would eventually be the fellowship hall. And it looked like that was going to happen. Meanwhile, we found a place that looked like it would be a good place for us to go to. We made an offer on it. They turned it down. Meanwhile, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed, and the Lord helped us to figure out how to remove quite a bit of the debt that we owe for this church. We were able to refinance our mortgage. That was Bob Montoya's idea. Where's Bob? Is he in here? Bob, there's Bob. That was his idea. Carl and Deborah Longley was their idea. Let's, we've got another asset over here. It's a cell phone tower. Is there a way we can get a significant amount of money out of that? And by the grace of God, we were able to, to finagle a deal with the people that own that cell phone tower. They, and we were able to take that money and get completely out of debt with the conference. Now we own the union. We do own the union on our mortgage. And we have been making our payments. Our mortgage payments, we've been paying our bills. We struggle a bit. Sometimes we don't quite make our budget. You know, there's some items that are discretionary that don't have to be funded. We don't always fund those every month. But by the grace of God, I believe that we're doing very good. So to wrap this up, God is blessing Heights Church. It was a miracle that this church is here and it's, uh, the, all those years ago, Dolores. And it's a miracle that it's here today. Amen? Amen. God is blessing this church. He's blessing the congregation. And we appreciate the faithfulness of our church members. We thank you for the giving, all of that. And let me tell you, not one penny of that church, of the money that goes in, comes to me. All of the tithe goes and is distributed to the storehouse, as the Bible says. The other giving goes to take care of this church and its mission. Meanwhile, as we have struggled, we have continued to do what God has called us to do. This church is here, like I said a few weeks ago. Betty Sarver sitting there. The potlucks are really good here at this church. And I encourage everybody to stick around for the potlucks. You'll enjoy it today. The fellowship is wonderful at this church. It really is. It really is. But the main reason we're here is to be a light to the people that are about us. The main reason that God has called us here is to let our light shine, right? We're to be a light to the world. We're let, to let our light shine to the people that are about us. We've done a lot of evangelism. We're planning more for next year. We invite you to participate. We have some, here, some people here visiting from Waterflow, New Mexico. It's not by accident that they're here, I don't believe. Sitting near the back. I encourage you to meet them and greet them. And I was talking to the lady from Waterflow. If you don't know where Waterflow is, it's up near 
Chiprock, New Mexico, not too far from Farmington, New Mexico. Pastor Doug Batchelor, early in his ministry, did work up there in Waterflow. Anyhow, um, as we were talking, it reminded me that we have an opportunity, this church and the churches in this area and the Waterflow congregation, to spend a little money and purchase some Steps to Christ in Navajo. And if you would like to give towards that, you're certainly welcome to. Just make out a check and write Navajo on it and put it in the offering plate. If you would like to help with our mortgage, and I'm not shy to say that, we do still have a mortgage we have to pay off, and that money helps to pay off the debt here so that we can do more. We are a doing church, and we want to do more. So we encourage you to help us out along those lines. If you want to help with the Navajo Steps to Christ, call Walking with Jesus. By the way, that book was put together by uh, Frank Hardy. And who is the other gentleman? Goldtooth? Brother Goldtooth, who attends the Waterflow Church. We'll get those books in people's hands, okay? We do regularly basis. We do the New Mexico State Fair. We do the Gathering of Nations, the largest gathering of Native Americans in the world, right here in Albuquerque. This church coordinates an outreach to them, and we do other outreaches as well. And like I said, we're planning more for next year to fulfill the purpose why we've been called. Thank you for your patience. I can continue talking, but I'm ready to eat. How about you? Let's stand together. Uh, do we, we sing first, and then we, then we have our closing prayer, okay? So let's stand for our closing song, and we'll have a closing prayer, and we'll be finished. Thank you all. Let's all turn in our hymnals to hymn number 560. Let all things now living, 560. Amen. Thanks to everybody who participated. We have two deacons at the back door. If you would like to put an offering in the plate, all of that will go to the needy. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much how you've led us in the past and how you're leading us now. Wherever we've come from, from visiting churches elsewhere in the world, we're grateful for all of our visitors and we're thankful for our members here. Lord, we're thankful how you've taken care of our church and we're thankful, Lord, that you fixed it up you worked a miracle, and we are still here. And, Lord, you're taking care of us financially and in every other way possible as well. As we go to our meals, as we go to our homes this afternoon, help us to be thankful because we know as we express our gratitude, you'll give us more to be thankful for. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. May you quiet.